Wi-Fi to be removed from schools in Austria. He too has found health effects at similar levels of radiation to Wi-Fi. If you go into the data, you can see a very, very clear picture. It's, it's like a puzzle and, and everything thing fits well together from DNA breaks, DNA damage, up to uh, animal studies and up to the uh, epidemiological evidence that shows, for example, increased symptoms as well as increased cancer rates. And over in Sweden, there's the world-renowned Karolinska Institute. It's where we met Dr. Olli Johansson. He conducted experiments at lower levels of radiation than Wi-Fi and found biological effects. The UK government will say there are no known adverse health effects from this form of radiation. Is it accurate information that they're giving out in that no, case? No, 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 I don't think so. If you look in the literature, you have a large number of various effects, like chromosome damage, you have impact on the concentration capacity, and decrease in short-term memory, increases in the number of cancer incidences, and so on. I mean, there's a large number of various areas here. And, and, yet, and yet we're told by the authorities in the UK there are no known adverse health effects. Well, that's very odd, I must say. His pioneering research work has led him to a minority group who appear to become physically ill when exposed to this kind of electro smog. They're called electro hypersensitives. People with electro hypersensitivity generally feel that something is wrong. You and I, we don't. And the question then is, of course, 20, 30 years from now on, will we have some form of cancer, neurological disease, or something? We don't know. Just because we can't feel it? No, we don't feel it. We don't get a warning signal. One of the possible electrosensitives he's met lives in Lincolnshire, close to a mobile phone mast. She's just participated in an important laboratory study. If she's genuinely affected, a kind of human antenna, then there's potentially generations of people behind her who could also be. Just try and describe it for us, the feeling. Uh, my head feels uh, hot, burning. My face feels burning. I feel like um, I've, I've, I'm going to be sick. My, my, my stomach feels um, uncomfortable. Yeah, and I just feel a, a very sharp pain at the back of my head. So what about the lab tests? Well, they'd only just finished. They were independently funded and carried out by the University of Essex. Participants were exposed to the levels of radiation typically emitted by phone masts, which, as we've seen, can be far lower than Wi-Fi. Sylvia could tell when the mast was on or off two-thirds of the time. The rest of the participants' results are still being analysed. This is where some of the, the radiation is quite bad, is it? Yeah, it's very bad. The evidence is still unclear when it comes to Sylvia's results, but she feels she's needed silver foil shielding ever since they moved near the mast. Goodness me. It's like being in a, in a huge oven, isn't it? It is, yeah. Because people, they don't understand that foil actually could stop some of the microwave. Um, I'm going to show you what it does, you know, to, to, to microwave okay. foil. So this is the area where we heard that there was quite a strong signal. Her radiation monitor converts the signal from the mast into sound. The foil will block some of the signal. Yes. If Sylvia's symptoms are because of radiation, everything changes. It means there can be a biological effect at levels as low as that from Wi-Fi. It'd throw our limits out of the window and put a question mark over the Wi-Fi revolution. I sympathise with Sylvia Wilson very much because I just suspect that there might be something in this. How significant would that be? Well, we, that's a problem, is that we simply do not know. I mean, it can, uh, as I said, um, it need not necessarily mean disease, but it might. I mean, it might simply be that um, it's got no effect, that it's not worth worrying about at all, or it might be that these are uh, the human canaries of the future. 
Entire cities in the UK are now Wi-Fi hotspots, 11 of them in all, and the number's growing. Liverpool, Manchester, Edinburgh, Brighton, the city of London. Some run by BT, others by a company called The Cloud. And when you're outdoors, the radiation is becoming increasingly difficult to avoid. Five miles outside Norwich, and not a sniff of a connection. In the suburbs, a flicker of a signal, probably from people's home Wi-Fi routers. And in the city centre... There you go. It looks like we've got completely cable-free connectivity. But others would say this makes Norwich a city of virtual smog. Norwich was the first UK city to pilot a government-funded wireless network. In other cities, it's BT and the cloud charging users. But the government was so keen on Wi-Fi, it launched the Norwich service for free. You can see the mini-masts, or nodes, 200 of them in all, which sustain the network and create a pool of connectivity. We went around the city centre with a radiation monitor. Went into the red there. We're getting quite high readings here. They're about three or four times higher than we got at the mobile phone mast in the main beam of it, and uh, people are walking up and down here. They won't know it, and uh, I mean, it could be because of that. There's a little node up there on the top of the lamppost. It's something that's made their MP worried. He was a biologist and cancer specialist for 40 years before entering politics and feels his own party is now ignoring the advice they themselves commissioned. How seriously do you think the government's taking the precautionary approach right now with respect to Wi-Fi? Oh, I don't think there's any, any doubt about it. They're not at all. Wi-Fi is just being rolled out as the great big white heat of technology. Industry rules in this area and uh, the precautionary principle and the safety of people who might benefit to some extent from the technologies are completely dismissed. It's just it's wild west country for the companies. They just put them where they want and uh, say there's no evidence. Now, you know, five, ten years from now, as the evidence grows, there's enough now to be worried about, but as the evidence grows, who knows what it might show. It might show that it's completely unsafe for certain groups of people. But whilst the government races ahead, apparently unrestrained by its own chief advisor, others are more cautious. Switzerland, Italy, Russia, China, all have exposure limits thousands of times below ours. In Salzburg, the government advises against Wi-Fi in schools altogether. And there's something special happening in Sweden. We've flown in with our electrosensitive Sylvia, our government doesn't acknowledge her condition, but here, it's different. Deep in the Swedish woods, the hideaway of another woman called Sylvia. Hello. 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 Welcome. Good to meet you. Welcome. Right, can we come and have a look around? Yes. She's an electrosensitive too, and so are several of her friends. Can you feel anything here? I don't feel anything here. All what I feel is just uh, me here. Actually, I could just uh, think about other things, you know. It's just it's nice. It's just, yeah. uh, um, mm -hmm. you know, I feel free. So when did the authorities here start acknowledging the existence of this? They did so in 2003. Uh, they, then they said this is uh, an official disability. A disability? Yes. The Swedish government estimates that 3% of the population suffer this disability. Translate that to the UK, and it's about 2 million people. Yet as far as our government's concerned, there are none. We set off for Stockholm and Swedish Sylvia's city centre flat. She's plotted a route to avoid all the masks. She wants to show us just how seriously her government takes her condition. Like the UK, this is a place where more and more people are acquiring Wi-Fi. But there's a key difference. 